we coped uh, fairly well. I mean, life was normal. We just were just living with this cloud that we knew was coming. You don't get to choose the deck that's dealt you. You get to choose how you play the cards. Welcome. We created this video to offer useful tools to help you care for an adult living with Huntington's disease or HD. You may not feel prepared for this role, but know that there are resources and a community of HD caregivers to help you. We'll be looking at the early, middle, and late stages of Huntington's disease, and we'll focus on information and recommendations related to each stage. We'll also cover what to expect, how to prepare, and we'll provide strategies to help you along the way. Let's start with a quick overview. HD is an inherited neurodegenerative disorder caused by the mutation of a single gene. Three major areas impacted by HD include movement, memory, and mood. HD can occur in children as well as adults. Many people with HD will begin to experience symptoms in midlife. Keep in mind that the disease can progress differently for each person. Before we begin, here are five key takeaways. Get support early. This is not a caregiving role that is easy or can be done alone. Connect with medical providers who specialize in treating and managing Huntington's disease. Learn about HD, specific resources, and services available to you. Review your medical, legal, and estate plan preferences and update them as necessary. And take time to care for yourself. In early stage Huntington's, you got to realize that it's going to get a lot worse. And uh, you just, just be prepared for it. Don't hope that this is going to be a a mild case uh, because there are no mild cases of Huntington's disease. In the early stage of Huntington's disease, people are generally independent and can care for themselves. You may be familiar with the term chorea, which refers to involuntary motor movements, twitches or tremors that often begin in the face and hands. Cognitive changes may also be noticeable, such as difficulty concentrating. Mood can be affected and a person may begin to suffer from anxiety and depression. They may become more irritable and angry. Be sure to let a doctor know if you notice any of these symptoms. And if the person expresses suicidal thoughts or doesn't want to go on living with the disease, it's important to connect them with help immediately. Participating in a support group for people with early stage HD can help them ease their distress and learn proactive coping skills. Individual counseling can also be very helpful. You've got to have people that understand what you're going through. For us, it's family and church members. Everybody understands what's going on with Pam. Learn all you can about Huntington's and connect with medical providers who have experience with the disease. People living with HD will benefit from a healthcare team comprised of a primary care doctor, a neurologist, and a psychiatrist. Although there are no cures for Huntington's yet, there are medications to treat and manage the symptoms. You may also want to explore current research opportunities for HD-specific trials. Because HD is a genetic illness, you may be wondering if you should get tested for it too. Before getting tested, it is highly recommended that you meet with a genetic counselor. Genetic counselors can provide information, support, and guidance. Social workers can help connect you to resources and referrals in your community, as well as provide you with supportive counseling. How are you feeling about your loved one's diagnosis? Sadness? Anger? Fear? Disbelief? Perhaps you feel relief at having an explanation for the unusual changes you've been observing. All of these feelings are normal. My wife had two sisters, and the one who was the youngest of the three daughters came down with the disease first at age 34, as opposed to my wife being diagnosed at age 51. 
Huntington's disease can progress over 10 to 20 years. As a caregiver, it's very important to find support even before you think you need it. Writing in a journal can help you to name and express your feelings. Many caregivers find journaling useful, even therapeutic. Physical exercise, prayer, meditation, relaxation exercises, support groups, talking one-on-one -on -one with a friend or counselor, and creating new rituals can help you to stay well. Make the time to do things you find fun and fulfilling. Huntington's is a disease that affects everyone in the family in different ways. This includes you as the caregiver, the person with HD, their relatives, and friends. Each will need their own kind of support. Be aware that you may not have the support and understanding you need from those around you. Maybe they don't have experience as caregivers and can't relate to what you're going through. Caregiver support groups offer a safe, caring environment to share experiences and learn from others in similar situations. Support groups are free, online, and in person. But you've got to have help. You can't, you can't do it on your own. It will make you crazy. I just went and it, it listened to what people were saying and ch chimed in a little bit myself. And, uh, and, 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 and overall, I, I benefited a lot. Uh, for sure. Both you and the person you care for will have to learn to balance HD symptoms and care needs with the desire to be independent. You both should keep dates with friends, keep up with interests and hobbies, and do things that you enjoy. A common question caregivers ask is, what will happen to the person I care for if something happens to me? One thing to do is to make sure that your own legal and financial documents are updated. This is also a good time to encourage the person with HD to make or update legal and financial arrangements, especially before they experience significant cognitive changes. For them, it's best to speak with an attorney who specializes in disability and estate planning. Key documents to complete include a durable power of attorney for finances, an advanced healthcare directive, a will and or a trust, and a pulsed or DNR, which specifies the type of medical interventions wanted at the end of life. This is also the time for the person with HD to sign a release of information to allow medical staff to speak with you and others who are closely involved in their care. If you or the person with HD is employed, it is important to contact the Human Resources Department to learn about eligible benefits, such as long-term disability and paid and unpaid family leave options. Securing financial help from the government can be a challenging and confusing process. We recommend seeking out experts to help you early on. Consult with an attorney, a community organization, or legal aid office that specializes in Social Security Disability Insurance, or SSDI, and Supplemental Security Income, or SSI. They can also help you navigate Medicare and Medicaid. A person is eligible for Medicare when they turn 65 or they become disabled before 65 and have been receiving SSDI for 24 months. It is important to note that Medicare does not pay for long-term care, such as an assisted living or skilled nursing facility. Let's move on to the middle stage, when a person with HD will need more help with basic personal care, such as bathing, dressing, and brushing their teeth. They may experience more difficulty thinking clearly and may display more behavioral changes such as inhibition, impulsiveness, or aggression. It's up and down, it's up and down, it's up and down. It's a roller coaster ride. There will come a time when she won't be able to put her clothes on at all. Okay, uh, right now she's able to feed herself. There'll come a time when that won't be true. As symptoms progress, it is common for the caregiver to feel isolated in dealing with new stages of grief and loss. Too often, just when you really need more support, friends and even family may step back due to their inability to witness your pain and your loved one's decline. They may not understand the disease or how to be of help. 
take a break. Respite can come from having a family member, friend, or in-home professional help out. You can also create self-care moments throughout the day by taking small, intentional breaks for yourself, even if it's just 15 minutes to drink a cup of tea, exercise, or engage in another enjoyable activity of your choice. And if you need more time off, there are out-of-home respite options like adult day programs or a short-term stay in a 24-hour care facility. Caregivers often don't feel they need respite until they experience a crisis or problem with their own health. Some signs that you need to take a break include health issues like a rash or an ache that doesn't go away, rising blood pressure, not managing your own chronic health conditions, trouble sleeping, feeling anxious, irritable, and less patient, or turning to alcohol or drugs in an effort to relieve your stress. These are all signs that you need more support and time to take care of yourself. Be sure to prioritize your physical and emotional well-being. Keep your doctor or therapist appointments, visit with friends, and do activities you enjoy. Self-care benefits both you and the person you care for. Because HD causes motor changes, it's important to identify potential hazards that may exist in the home. A physical therapist or PT can do an assessment and suggest modifications, such as bathroom grab bars, for getting in and out of the shower. PTs can also recommend other types of equipment and strategies to prevent falls and injury. An occupational therapist or OT helps promote independence and safety for the person living with HD. They can help identify ways to complete daily activities and manage personal care. They also have a wide knowledge of assistive devices. For personal safety outside the home, we recommend that the person with HD carry a card stating they have Huntington's and wear an ID bracelet with emergency contact information. Because the disease can cause behavioral changes, which can lead to 911 calls, consider reaching out ahead of time to your local police or fire department. People with HD may develop difficulty swallowing their food and beverages. A speech therapist can determine what is causing the swallowing difficulties and make recommendations to reduce the risk of coughing or choking. So when she takes her pills, we, we figured this out a year ago, uh, it's, we get her, give her a little cup, you know, like they do in the, in the hospital. Oh my goodness, what a difference that has, just that one little thing. Difficulty eating and swallowing, as well as the general progression of HD, can cause weight loss, which can lead to infections and pressure sores. People with HD require a higher caloric intake, a dietitian can guide you on proper nutrition to support a healthy weight and immune system. Palliative care is a type of supportive health care to improve the quality of life for people with chronic conditions. Palliative care teams can help to manage symptoms and reduce suffering and you don't have to be in hospice to qualify. Contact the medical team of the person with HD for referrals to any of these services. Remember, you are their advocate. Now let's talk about late stage Huntington's disease. A person in the later stage will need help with all of their personal care. They will experience muscle rigidity or stiffness, as well as involuntary spasms. We're going along pretty well until the last few years. She took a pretty precipitous dive as far as uh, uh, the progression of the disease and, um, and, and, and things changed a lot at that point. I mean, I, it, it was just total hands-on and so forth. Just swallowing food can become a major challenge. Be aware food or liquid inhaled into the lungs can lead to aspiration pneumonia, one of the most common causes of death for someone with HD. Their ability to speak and communicate their needs will be very limited. Use eye contact, touch, and a calm voice to reassure them. There are also online communication boards and other tools that may help. 
talk with the medical team, including a speech therapist, about interventions to reduce pain or suffering. There often comes a time when the person living with HD requires a higher level of care than can be provided at home. Moving the person to a nursing facility can be a tough decision, but a necessary one. You may feel like you failed or you're breaking a promise, even when you know placement will provide more safety and advanced care. I can remember the day I took her over and left her at the nursing home. I came home and I was laughing and crying at the same time. I mean, it, was, it was extremely emotional, but on the other hand, it was, it was an extreme relief. If you're considering a skilled nursing facility, it's helpful to get a list of local options and to visit. Social workers, care managers, and others can help you figure out if the cost of placement is covered by Medicaid, long-term care insurance, or VA benefits. Even when the individual moves to a skilled nursing facility, this doesn't mean that your role as a caregiver ends. Your ongoing presence and advocacy will help ensure that proper care is provided. Hospice services are designed to support individuals toward the end of life. Care can be provided wherever the person resides, including at a home or in a facility. This includes visiting nurses, pain management, and personal care. Hospice can also provide spiritual, grief, and bereavement support, as well as respite for family caregivers. Hospice is a Medicare benefit, and individuals are eligible when a doctor has determined a patient has six months or less to live. You can ask the doctor for a referral to begin services, or hospice can assist you in getting a referral from the doctor if the patient's eligible. We want to thank you for viewing this video and remind you of these very important key takeaways. Get support early. Connect with Huntington specialists. Learn about HD specific resources. Review your medical, legal, and estate plan preferences and update them as necessary. And take time to care for yourself. If you don't have a personal support group, okay, you need to find one. Okay, don't try to do this on your own. I guarantee you will lose your mind because you have no idea where this is going to go and how it's going to end up. Find out more about all the topics addressed in this video through the accompanying resource guide by speaking with your caregiver's HD medical team and by contacting your local Huntington's support organization. We hope the information included in this video will give you a starting point for what questions to ask or which resources to request so you feel more informed and supported in your caregiving journey.